Hi, we're going to do an edit with me. And so today I want to take you into Lightroom. I want to show you a quick and easy edit on a photo that I've taken. So this will be a great video for the beginner or just someone that wants a real easy edit and wants to see how a couple of the tools within Lightroom works. So we're going to go in and see what our project's going to be. So this is the photo after it has been edited. Could it be taken a little farther? Absolutely. If you wanted to, you could continue working on this and it would be even better probably. But it's a pretty good return on a small amount of effort and I'm going to show you where it started and then we're going to get started on how to do the edit. So the picture straight out of camera, shot in raw, looked like this. Now you might think, oh my gosh, she really underexposed it. And I did underexpose it a little bit but not as much as may first come off because that white water on those waves is exposed great. So we get to see all the detail. If I would have exposed brighter, then I would have had um, more detail in the foreground and in the background, but in that middle ground where we have the waves splashing, then that would have been blown out. And I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. But with the way it's captured now, we're going to be able to pull up the shadows in the darker areas and still keep the details in the whitest areas. So yes, it's slightly underexposed maybe, but it won't take much to correct that. And then we'll lift those shadows up, straighten it out. And that's exactly what you need to do with each and every photo that you look at. Not that you have to do those exact things, but you need to analyze what you're seeing. So when I was saying those things, I was analyzing what I liked about the picture and what I didn't like about the picture. So with every image that you want to edit before you get started, it's a great way to start is to look at that image and see what is it that you like in the picture? What is it that you don't like in the picture? Is there something in that picture that needs to be taken out or something that needs, needs to be added in. So that's my mindset as I progress through the edit also. So while I will do those things, and it's figuring out how to do them, which is why I'm here today explaining this, it'll, it will give you an idea how to achieve some of the things that I don't like about this picture. And hopefully you'll be able to use that information down the road when you're doing some of your edits. So when I look at this picture, Again, I think the water is pretty close to spot on. I think that the color balance on this picture is just a little off. It seems to be just a little bit skewed towards the uh, cyan or the green side of things. So I think we need to counterbalance that and bring that up just a little bit as one of our first things. We may bring up that exposure so you can get a feel for what's in the picture and what would happen if we had a higher exposure or longer exposure. So let's get into this. So we need to work on this in the develop module of Lightroom. And even though you can't see it, we are in Lightroom right now. So know that if you're a beginner to Lightroom, one of the neat things is you can show your image on the Lightroom screen and it will look like this. So it will look like it's filling the screen and you just have a black border. But all this is, is the light out mode inside Lightroom. And so to get out of this lights out mode, all I have to do is hit the L key and the lights will turn on. Once the lights are on, if you want to dim the lights in the background, all you have to do is hit the L key again. It will go somewhat darker. Hit it a second time, it will go black. Get back to lights on, hit that L key one more time, and we're ready to start editing. We are in the library module. So you get to see this picture as a single image, or we could view it in the Lightroom module as a grid mode. So to do that, we would just simply hit the G key, or you can come down to this bottom left corner, and you should see the grid mode option, or you can see the single image option called the loot view. So we're in loot view. It gives you a better idea, because um, you can see it big. But we want to get into the develop module so that we can get to our editing tools. So to do that, all you have to do is one of two things. You either come up to the develop module 
or the word up here develop and you click on it or you can simply excuse me again simply hit the D key so that's what I'm going to do and now you can see our tools so if you happen to have a panel open over here which might look like this it gives you a smaller image to work on I like as much real estate for my image as I can get so I can see it as good as I could possibly see it so I'm going to just click on this little arrow over here on the left hand side and it will collapse that panel and I have a bigger screen for my image that I'm editing all right so we talked about it's too dark here it's too dark there let's see if we did a global exposure increase so it's going to happen to everything in the whole picture anything you do within this basic panel is going to do it to the entire image so if we pull up say a stop it's looking better in the foreground but it's not good enough in my opinion I think it needs to go lighter yet and look at the water definitely blown out let's bring it up a little farther where it looks like we want it to look in the foreground so let's bring it up to a stop and a half and see how that looks just about there close enough now it's looking better it still may be not as the way I would have it but it's close but boy look at that water now so you might be thinking if you're used to using Lightroom at all well let's just bring down the highlights well let's do that we'll start bringing them down bringing them down bringing it down we are all the way down a hundred minus a hundred we're starting to get some of the details back but it's not as good as it was here's what it was before here's what it is at minus a hundred in the highlights and the thing about lowering the highlights it lowered them globally and not all the highlights in the picture really needed to be lowered just the ones in that that um, the wave area so what happens then is you're lowering the highlights where it doesn't need to be lowered and it kind of makes for a flatter, duller, um, darker image. It kind of just flattens everything out and it's not necessarily always the way you want it to go. So I'm not sure that this is our answer. However, we could try another thing. Instead of pushing and pulling the levers or the all these different sliders uh, the way I just did and we could continue to add more on let's see what Lightroom does on its own if we hit auto and sometimes Lightroom does a fantastic job and sometimes it's just not quite there but let's see what uh, uh, auto does for this well it does bring it back to similar to what it would have been, would have been um, before we started so here's what it looked like before here's after auto it's better but it's not good enough and if we raised say the shadows say we wanted to raise them a bit more maybe that will help it did help and it didn't um, blow out the highlights so much so that is a help but not sure that it's all the way so we'll go ahead and leave it where auto put it we will work with that one. Now, one of the other main things before I get off of this main screen will be the fact that when I shot this, so excited to get it, I think, is I just didn't have my camera straight. So that horizon line is so sloped, it's terrible. And you know, a lot of people take pictures like this. It's not something to be ashamed of, it just happens. You're taking it, you turn, and now things are not quite level and you still got the picture but it's still not quite the way you want it so what we need to do is straighten out that horizon always especially on uh, ocean it is never out of level the water always is level in an ocean scene so we need to come into our crop tool which is up here in the on the left side of this upper panel we're going to click on that and there's three ways to level out our horizon. One is very simple. You hit auto and it will just do it. And so if I looked at it now, you'll see it's nice and level. So that's quick and easy. Now it worked great 
on this particular image because it's a very definite horizon. It rec recognized that and it adjusted accordingly. Now it doesn't always work quite so easy because sometimes you're in a building situation and it's got all kinds of lines that it's trying to evaluate whether that's the one that's supposed to be level or is it this one or this one. And so therefore it always doesn't always work as easy as Otto did on this one. So there's a couple other ways to do it. One of them is to come over to this little icon over here that represents a level tool. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to take my cursor over and on the one end of the horizon I'm going to click and hold and drag to somewhere up the horizon and release it. And again it will automatically straighten that horizon line. So that's a second way to do it. One more way I'll show you since there's three I'm just going to go down here and reset now, the other way is to take this slider and you can adjust it left or right. This time we're going to pull it to the right until that horizon line is running parallel to one of those grid lines. And that's about it. So there we have another straight horizon line. You can push or pull the image just ever so slightly depending on where you want to place your uh, kite border. We'll say about there. Matter of fact, I'll come in just a little bit more, put him right on that axis point. And because this is one of those things they say it tends to make for a, a better image is to have something on one of these cross joints of that grid. So we're going to leave it there. And now we're ready to get on with the rest of our edits. Well, we learned in the last, when I was talking about it, that um, we can't really get the picture where we want it doing it globally in this basics panel. But a couple other things we could do. One is to change the profile, the color profile in our picture. So if you click on this word Adobe Color, you get some options. Your options may not be the same. They may be, um, I'm going to try, you could go through and test each and every one of those. I'm going to try landscape, Adobe landscape, and I like that. Um, if you want to see what the other one looks like, we'll go back to Adobe Color. You can reevaluate. It's not quite as punchy. We could go ahead and add the vibrance manually down below. It is slightly different than um, doing it with this color profile, but you could try it either way. I think I'll go ahead and go with Adobe landscape. It's easy. It gives us that pop and then we'll see how we end up. We can always come back and change it because nothing is ever hard baked in Lightroom. You can always readjust. The other thing I mentioned before was I felt that there was a little bit of a cyan green cast to the water and so we have the ability to adjust the green tint and see if we can pull it more towards the magenta side and see if that takes care of it. So I'm just going to up this just a little bit. So we pulled a little bit towards magenta. And I can even add just a hint of yellow, see if that helps at all. I don't know that it actually did. I think we'll go back to about where it was, which is hard to hit. So I think I'll just go back up here, hit as shot, and then I'll bump up that magenta just a little bit. I could go down and see if I can get cyan out of it, if it's a cyan thing. So let's go down to this HSL panel and let's see if we can take cyan, which is aqua, and move it a little bit more. Let's just see if we desaturate the cyan, what happens. And all I'm looking at is the water. I want to see if there's any change in that water at all, and there really isn't. So let's see, I tested the green too. I think we're pretty good. I think we're going to leave it as is. Seems pretty balanced. So now we still need to lighten those two areas that we've ta been talking about. So how can I do that without doing it globally? I'm going to go up to this masking icon, which is the circle with the dotted line around it. I'm going to click on it. 
And you have a lot of different options for types of masking to use. Um, select subject would select the guy on the board. And I think that's not a bad option, but I wanted to do the whole bottom section so it really doesn't get us enough. Select sky, well that might work for the top, although it will not pick up you know, underneath the horizon, so maybe that's not the ideal either. Um, we could do a brush where we just painted it all in. That would work. It just might take slightly more effort. I think what we're going to use is linear gradient. So if I click on this, and if I want to pull a linear gradient up from the bottom of the picture towards the wave, I'm going to hold down my shift key because that will allow me to draw a straight line. And what I mean by that is if I did it this way, look at how it moves around depending on where I move. So if I uh, start over, so I, let's go back and get rid of that. And let's do a new one. And so now this time I'm going to hold down the shift key as I pull it up. And you can see it goes straight. Even though I try to move it, it doesn't. So I'm going to pull it up until that middle line is almost to the bottom of the wave. It's not quite. What this line, these lines refer to is I have full editing power down here. So it's doing the maximum edit, whatever it happens to be that I'm going to do. And when it gets to the center line, it stops and it starts feathering out from there towards the upper line. So it's still there above the line, but not as much. So whatever we uh, use our sliders to pull over, it's not going to happen as strongly above that center line. We may still want to paint it away from things after we do it, but at this point in time, uh, we're doing most of our action to the bottom of the picture, which is where we want it. So let's just bump up our exposure and see how that works for us. So I'm going to pull it up a little. And you can see that's it's looking pretty good. What if we bumped up the shadows a little bit, so the darker areas? So that lightened it even more, and I kind of am liking how it's working. It's bringing our eye to the bottom where we want it to be, and we can see our um, surfer, um, and he's pretty clear, and he's pretty prominent in the image. We can also accent him a little bit more, but I think for right now, this looks pretty good. So let's now concentrate on the top part of the image, and let's create a new mask by clicking the plus sign. Let's do another linear gradient. I'm going to hold that shift key down again, and I'm going to pull down towards the wave. I'm going to stop just beyond the um, horizon line, and I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to pull up the exposure, just lighten it a little bit. Now, I don't necessarily want to go maybe as bright as the foreground because I want it to just re you know, our sight not to go directly to the sky. I just want it to kind of fade into the background, which it is. And I just don't want it to look as dark as it was. So I think bringing it up, I've brought it up a quarter of a stop. We can try coming up a little bit more. That's a little over a third of a stop. I think that's not bad. You can try coming up. That's over a half a stop. I think that's getting a little much. My attention tends to start going up towards that sky a little bit. So let's pull it back to about, oh, 37, point 37. I'm kind of liking that. So I'm pretty happy with where it's standing right now. So what's the next thing that I would like to do? Well, what if I did another something to the, I think he's a kite surfer. Um, he's, he's connected to a kite. You can see his lines, and I didn't get the kite in there. That's the thing about... Um, photographing kite surfers is they are so far from the kite that you get a lot of dead space. So I was happy I got him. I thought some of the pictures I have both in there and I just decided to edit this one for you. But anyway, if we decided to create a new mask, um, maybe this time we'll see how I like it, but let's draw out a radiant gradient, a radial gradient. 
And to do that, I clicked on it, and now I'm just, you can see the X on my cur is my cursor. I'm going to click and drag. And now I'm going to center that over on him by grabbing the circle and just pulling it over. Now let's see what happens when I increase the exposure just on him. A little bit of a lag. Let's see. So I don't want to go too, I won't get carried away. I want it to just be a subtle bit lighter on him so that our eye is attracted to him, but we really don't know why he's catching our eye so much. And now you know it's because we made him just a little bit lighter than the rest of the area around him. Now when you look up here, it will tell you that on our gradient we have a feather of about 46. We can increase that feather, which will then decrease the size of maximum effect. So that's that center line. Let me pop that overlay on there. So the area of maximum effect is in here and then between this line and this line is the feathered area. So if I want to affect this area but I'd like this area to be smaller, I can adjust the feather. Now let's see if I can do it and then should come back. So this circle, inner circle got smaller. Um, it doesn't, I, you know, it used to get, it would hold the center, the main event area. It would hold that the same and it would feather it out farther. I wish it still did that and I don't seem to be able to get it to do the old way. So anyway, so it's going to put the majority of the effect right in here. It's going to feather it off as it goes up. Let's pull off to the side and turn off our overlay so we can see the effect on its own. Now what we might do is pull this down slightly below him. So his head is just at the top. Instead of getting our effect into that wave area any more than we need to, we'll pull it down and it'll sit just below that. And I'm kind of liking what I see. It's getting this a little bit lighter. And then off to the side, it's darker, which again is causing our eye to go to the subject. So I'm pretty happy with that. You can also come up here. Let's just do a different one. We can also rename these. So we'll say, um, this is, we're just call it a light in the center. So to rename it from mass three, I'm going to right click, hit rename, and we'll just say it's light in the center. And hit OK. And so now you can see it's got a name on it. So you can keep yourself organized. We can do the same for mask two. What I'll do is right click, rename, and then we will call this light in sky. OK. And we'll come to the first one. We're going to rename it. We're going to say that was light and foreground. All right, so now what do we want to do? Let's go back to the top here. Now, I would say let's see if we can make him pop a little more. I'm going to, I want him to stand out without necessarily lightening or darkening anymore. So how can I do that? If I make a create a new mask, and this time I'm going to use the brush, and let's just brush in. I'm going to zoom in a little by hitting a Command Plus, Command or Control Plus, and I'm going to add a little texture. I'm going to paint him first and it doesn't look like I'm getting a whole lot. Yeah, I'm getting 100%. So I'm getting 100 flow, 100 density. That's good. Now it's showing up. It was just a little bit of a lag thing. See, I'm painting now. I'm getting this lag going on. And let's paint down a little bit more. we got to wait for him to catch up with us. Sorry about that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to Texture, 
and I'm just going to hit a little plus on the texture, a little plus on the clarity, and maybe a little plus on the sharpening. So he's getting a little bit more of that than anywhere else. So let's close this out. And let's zoom back out. And let's look at where we are. This is now. This is before, after. Before, after. And I think we're pretty... <coughs> Pretty well done. Excuse me. <coughs> so at this point, I think we're done. We've done a very basic edit. Yes, we could come back up here now. Maybe we'd like to do that. We could do one more thing. We could try bumping up the contrast, see if you like it. Or maybe it needs to go down. I don't think so. I think we're going to leave it where it was. So I'm going to undo that move. But maybe we want a little bit more vibrance. That I will go with. So I think this image is good to go. We'll compare it with what I have. Now, I don't have any anticipation that these are going to look the same, but they should be similar. So this is now on the one we just worked on. And here's the one before. You can kind of see the difference because I moved over our crop when I, when I was in there cropping it. So he's a little bit different place. But overall, it's very similar. Uh, this one may have a little less green in it. The other one looked a little greener to me. So I think we're good to go. That's a simple edit using Lightroom only. Uh, the one thing I did forget to do, let's go down to Detail. And let's sharpen this whole picture. Give it a little boost. So we'll say there's without it. There's with it. It's very simple, subtle, but it does help give it a little pop. Let's pull up the noise reduction just a little. We'll put it at 10. I'm going to turn this off and on again. Let's let it catch up. Here we go. Very subtle. You don't even see it change much, even zoomed in that far. But I think it did. It always helps it a little bit. We're waiting for it to come down. There you go. So again, there's an edit. Simple and easy. I hope you learned something from that. Come back. We'll do some more later. Thanks for joining us. Go out and get shooting.